Hello and welcome to another session. Welcome to my channel. Myself Saurabh Thawali and uh, I'll quickly introduce you guys about myself because there are a lot of people who are asking me about my background and uh, why I'm taking all these sessions. So just a high level overview about me. Uh, I've worked with all these companies uh, listed on over here, Oracle, Zensa, Cisco, Cognizant, Workday and uh, from last eight plus years, almost from last nine years, I'm doing a lot of automation stuff. I'm building different automation scripts for a variety of enterprise applications, automating database, web services, and so on. So this video tutorial is specifically about those people who are trying to learn Java from basics and mostly for automation engineers. So today we are going to discuss about constructors. So if you are going through all my videos, I strongly recommend you don't jump on any of the videos uh, directly and uh, just follow from the beginning. There are small, small videos like four or five minutes each will not take much of your time, but it will build a good understanding when you follow them in sequence. Okay. So today we are going to discuss about constructor. So what is constructor? So first I'll talk about the definition about it or the theoretical concept, and then we will have a practical example about it. Okay. So the constructor in, is nothing but a, a block of code similar to a method but it's not actually a method. Okay. Don't get confused, but I'm just saying it looks like a method, but it's not actually a method. If you see an example over here, I have a public class. I have a class which is highlighted in a red starts from here and ends here inside that I have created this no argument constructor. So basically if you, if you look at it properly, it looks similar to method, right? If you go back, to my previous sessions where we discussed about what is method and all those things, then you will understand that this is also looking like a method. But yes, as I said, it looks like a method, but it's not actually a method. What are the main differences of a constructor and a method? Let's try to understand that. So first of all, I'll repeat a constructor in Java is a block of code similar to a method that's called when an instance of an object is created. Now you will ask me, what is this? So if you go back to some of my previous sessions where we learned about how to create an object for a class, right? So the moment we create an object for a class, the constructor, the constructor in that class for which you are creating an object gets called automatically. Okay. We'll see an example so that all your doubts will be clear. Now, some more things about constructor. So what are the difference between the constructor and a method? As I said, it looks like a method, but don't get confused. It's not actually a method. Okay. So what are the key differences between constructor and method? This, this might be an interview question for you guys as well. If you're, you know, appearing for an interview and if someone asks you, can you tell me what is constructor and what, how it differs from a method, you should have a concrete answer for that. So the constructor doesn't have a return type. <coughs> the first and very important difference. Okay. And uh, the name of constructor is always same as the name of a class. So you cannot give some other name to a constructor. If you want to create a constructor in a class, you can't give some other name. The name of a constructor should be exactly same as the name of a class. If you see this previous example, we have created a constructor in this blue color. The name of the constructor is exactly same as the name of a class because that's the default definition of a constructor. Okay. Then the last is the constructor is always called when the instance of an object is created. So this third statement indicates whenever you're creating an object of a class, the constructor in that particular class automatically get called. Okay. We'll see an example. So like methods, constructor can be overloaded. So like, you know, we can create a methods with an overloading, right? In similar with a similar concept, with a similar logic, we can also create multiple constructor in a class and they can be overloaded. In other words, you can provide more than one constructor of a class if each, but if constructor will have a unique signature. Okay. Some of you might be wondering, let's jump directly on the example. So now I have a, I have a car class, which is created. We have created in our previous sessions. So it has a lot of things in it. Now what I'm going to do is I'll create a new class. I just right clicked on the package new and then class. I'll name this as constructor. You can give any name earlier constructor learning and then we need a main method and I'll say finish. So we have created a brand new class with main method in it. So this is how the class looks like whenever you're creating for the first time, right? 
now how we create an object so as you all guys know to create an object if you want to you know if you want to access any member variables or any class variables from a car class you need to create an object for that class right and how we create an object of a class equal to new keyword then name of a car name of a class once again that's it right this is the syntax whenever you want to create an object of a class so here abc is our object which we created for a car class now this is our car class so now using this object we'll able to access all the methods in that class the moment i give abc dot then i'll able to access whatever the public methods or whatever the public variables in that car class see now all those things are available for me so mostly the getters and setters which we created in our previous sessions they are available for me to access now coming back to constructor now java java has a default way of creating a constructor whenever you create an object of a class so what i mean to say now here the moment i created abc object for a car class which is this one till now we haven't created any constructor in this class right but the moment you create an object for a particular class and if this if that class doesn't have any, any constructor java automatically creates a constructor and it's kind of an hidden you don't see that but it creates and it calls the constructor so what i mean to say it's a no parameter or no argument constructor so how it creates so let's we we will try to create a constructor okay i already created for you guys over here so how we created a constructor inside a car class public the name of a constructor should be exactly same as the name of your class with this is constructor without any parameters no argument constructor and that's it so this particular the one which i highlighted is nothing but your constructor this will call this will get called automatically the moment you create an object for this class now how i can prove that so let's say i'm going to print something over here so see so control space just a shortcut to print something double quotes i'll say created no argument constructor right so we just added one print statement inside this constructor and now what i'll do is we have just created an object i didn't do any other thing in this particular class now i'm going to run this program let's run this see even there is no print statement in this particular class which i just executed it printed created no argument constructor now from where this print statement came this print statement came from this constructor so this is what you need to understand so as i said the moment you create an object java internally creates a no argument constructor of course there is no print statement in that that's why you never you never come to know that unless you actually want to work with a constructor okay but now here in this case we have create we explicitly created a constructor with a no arguments and we added a print statement inside it now when i executed this program this another class where we created an object for that class now you can see this print statement automatically got executed because it was inside that constructor so the so the first thing what we learned today is constructor looks like a method but they are not actually a method there is no return type to a constructor but actually for a method we do have return types right constructor can be with argument or without arguments constructor can be created like overloading constructor there can be multiple constructor constructor gets called automatically the moment you create an object for the class right and if you do not create a constructor then java automatically creates that internally but you never observe or you never never realize that because there is no print statement or there is no operations in it now the question comes sort of why we need the constructors right so okay in a simple word i would say there are some instances in which you have to initiate some variables or initiate certain conditions or do certain operations the moment someone creates an object for your class so what i mean to say if some someone is trying to access my class i want that person i want that object to initiate certain 
variables or to do some some operations like you know the preconditions kind of thing or when you know the computer is getting boot up when it's restarting we do some operations behind it something like that so i want the moment someone creates an object for my class i want something to execute in that situation i'll create a constructor because i no need to worry that person is calling my method or not to do that operations right i'll include those activities or i'll include those things in my constructor so that the moment someone is trying to access my class by creating an object that that piece of code will automatically get executed this piece of code which were whichever will be inside this constructor will get automatically called right now let's see we'll create another constructor now but this time we'll create a constructor with arguments okay so let's say like you know we create method overloading what is method overloading we create multiple methods with the same name but different arguments right so now here again we are creating another constructor public the name of our constructor should be exactly same as now here i'll say string i'll say color comma string model so there are two arguments both are string and then i'll print a similar statement over here created i'll say created constructor with argument right with argument and now what i'm going to do is so if you i have some private variables right color and model which is private because they are they can be accessed only within class so now i'm going to set them this dot color if you are thinking what this keyword is doing over here you should go back to my previous classes where we discussed about it it's pretty easy to understand so you can from the color highlighted you can understand this keyword plays an important role to differentiate between the variable names if they are same you can see here this is also same as color and this variable is also same so this keyword will help you to access the private variable at the class level and now we are what you are doing is we are setting up the color pr provided by a person calling a constructor to this particular and similarly we will do it for model model equal to model okay and then let's do let's print them double quotes so i'll say printing color and model color equal to model equal to make sure you use this concatenation whenever you want to you know include variables in between so all the string has to be inside a double quotes and then okay so and that just to differentiate uh, i'll do one thing okay that's fine now let's go back here now now let's try to run this program and see whether see again it executed only a constructor with no argument because we are not created an object and we are not passing any arguments that's why this constructor which we created didn't get called automatically so you need to understand the difference so only that constructor will get called automatically the way you are creating your an object so here we are created an object for a car class without any input right without any arguments that's why it called a no argument constructor the moment i pass on you know let's create another object so how we create car i'll say x y z equal to new 
and here what we'll do is we'll provide some input so let's say i'll say first one was color right i'll say red and then comma model right i'll say model x that's it so if you see what we are doing is we are creating an object of again a car class but this time we are passing an argument so what to happen it will create an object for sure but it will call a constructor which matches with your argument type now you are passing two string right so that's why it will it will call this if there are no arguments and it will call this if there are arguments now let's see just for a moment i'll comment this code now we have only one object which is created xyz and now i'll run this program see now it didn't call the first one right because we are creating an object with argument so it realized that the constructor with argument should get called automatically so this is all about the constructor so the main differences you should be knowing constructor looks like a method but they are not actually a method and there is no return type to a constructor you can see that constructor call get called automatically there is no need of explicit calls the way we do it in methods right now if i want to access any method in the car class what do we need to do is using an object which we created x y z dot we need to call that method right get color get whatever whatever methods are there in a car class we have to explicitly we have to explicitly make a calls but whereas in case of constructor you no need to do that java will take care of that the moment you create an object for a class and if that class has a constructor matching to your you know type of object you are creating it will call that specific constructor now here constructors also can be overloaded so here you can see we have two constructors one is without argument another is with i can create another one third constructor where i can you know add one more parameters like int parameters or so on so you can have as many numbers of constructor make sure the signature is different make sure their parameters are different if they are same then you may get an error okay so and uh, why we need a constructor uh, from logical perspective as i said you that if you want someone who is trying to access your class you want that person to initiate or you know to uh, to instantiate some some variable uh, values or there are some preconditions you want uh, uh, to be to be done before they start using your methods in that class or so on whatever it is like setting a values to a default variables or so on then you generally make sure that you have a constructor in place so in all those scenarios you may use a constructor so thanks for watching this video and uh, keep on watching all the videos in this video series i'm trying my best to create this uh, and trying to include as much as topic required for you know automation testers or uh, people who are trying to learn java from basics so give me a suggestions if you have any and uh, i'll be happy if you subscribe leave some comment thank you see you in the next video